Hey everyone, it's December 6th, and that means that if today's your birthday, you share with mass murderer Richard Speck, who killed eight victims in one night in 1966, and that is him right up there. Speck was born in 1941 in a suburb of Chicago, the seventh of eight children in a very religious family. His father passed away when he was just six, and after his mother remarried a few years later, he was subject to frequent beatings from his alcoholic stepfather. They moved to Dallas, Texas, where he suffered a head injury after falling out of a tree he had climbed. The family lacked stability, moving ten times in the span of a dozen years, which may be why Speck was a poor student, failing every subject in the ninth grade, after which he dropped out of school. He had begun to drink alcohol at the age of 12, and by the age of 15 he was getting drunk daily. His first brush with the law came at age 13, when he was arrested for trespassing, and he was arrested dozens of times over the next eight years for petty offenses. Speck found work at a 7-Up bottling plant, and in 1961, at the age of 20, he met a 15-year-old girl who he impregnated after just three weeks of dating. They were married in 1962, but in 1963 he was finally fingered for the felonious forging of a signature on a stolen paycheck, which got him sentenced to three years in prison. He was paroled after 16 months, but just one week after his release, he was back in trouble when he attacked a woman with a knife. Due to a paperwork error, Speck was mistakenly released from prison again after just six months. When he stole 70 cartons of cigarettes and realized the police were onto him, he left Texas, as this would have been his 42nd arrest there and likely meant extended prison time. He moved back to Chicago, where he almost immediately began committing violent crimes. His first was sexually assaulting a 65-year-old woman at knife point, and a week later, he may have murdered for the first time, attacking a woman whose liver ruptured, killing her. By July of 1966, Speck had bounced between jobs and been on the run from the law since he came back from Illinois. On July 13th, he sexually assaulted a woman at knife point and stole the Saturday night special gun that she had purchased for protection before walking to a townhouse that served as a dormitory for nursing students. He was drunk and high when he arrived and broke into the building where he accosted the residents at gunpoint. Speck rounded them up and kept them in a room together before leading them away one by one into an adjacent room where he raped and stabbed each of them to death. The attacks took several hours, during which time one potential victim managed to escape, wriggling out of her restraints and hiding under a bed. At 6 a.m., after the rest of the women had been killed, she managed to shout, They're all dead! All my friends are dead! which alerted neighbors who called police to the crime scene. Speck's fingerprints were discovered at the scene, and seeing news coverage, he attempted suicide four days later. He was arrested at the hospital and faced a trial where he was convicted of eight brutal murders. Initially sentenced to death, his sentence was overturned and commuted to life in prison after a landmark Supreme Court case. While in prison, Speck kept birds who flew into a cell window as pets, and after his death, was seen in a secret videotape engaging in sex and drug parties at the prison, where he claimed on camera to be having a great time behind bars. Speck died of a heart attack in 1991, one day before his 50th birthday. His story has been featured in dozens of books, films, and documentaries, including the 2002 film Speck. If this is your birthday, I hope you have a great day. Leave me a comment so I can wish you a happy birthday. If you know someone whose birthday it is today, send them this video so they can find out all about their birthday twin. And to Richard Speck, I say, happy birthday, you bastard.